on this one, for sure. Bidvest has subsidiaries in food service distribution, services and trading. Its assets are in Africa, Europe and Asia. Principally, that's correct. Founded, of course, by Brian Joffe, who has built this thing from basically nothing through a series of clever acquisitions over the last decades into a market cap entity plus 100 billion rands worth. Uh, we've got a price to earnings ratio here, 17.4 dividend yield of 2.7%. So this isn't your traditional investment holding company, but you are treating it as such. Well, it does have a fair range of things, all the way from selling knives and forks, delivering food. They have the agencies for cars. They have stakes in Comair. They've got you know businesses in all four corners of the world. They sponsor Sunderland Football Club. I mean, they are pretty much all over the world. I reckon it's good enough to call an investment holding company. Your thoughts as well, Lance? You believe this has got enough diversification to be called? Well, I suppose that's not the the under or the underpin to an investment holding company, but uh, it's. Yeah, they certainly style themselves as an investment holding company. And if you read their, their corporate blurb stuff, they certainly put themselves out there as an investment holding company. Slightly different approach, more hands-on, more wholly owned subsidiaries. They do have stakes in some listed entities, but they've tried to buy those up over the years. Of course, the, the, the big acquisition they made in the last little while was Adcock, which hasn't worked out really that well. And maybe the underpin is that they would take that business out and, and delist it one day. Um, because that really is the strategy, is control the cash flows and work those businesses very, very hard. As you say, Brian Joffe built the business up very, very successfully. Um, also one of the more established businesses that we're talking about today. Um, have, have, has had a phenomenal track record, but, but where it can go from here, it's difficult. It really is, is a big business and how much it can grow off this base, I suppose, is questionable. Do you believe that it can grow significantly off this base, Paul? Because yeah. I think that's probably what everybody in the mm. market is asking. No, I think it can. Remember, about a year ago, they had an expression of interest from, I think, a US-based food services business that wanted to buy their food service business. They looked at it quite carefully and they decided, well, should we list our food service business separately? And then they said no. And I think that's because Brian has gathered around him a team of really top-class managers like Dave Cleesby, Kevin Wakeford and the chaps. They know what they're doing. They've perfected the art of giving a lot of input on accounts and on capital allocation and on strategy, but not sitting on their underlying managers' heads too much that they get demotivated. Lance mentions Adcock. We can't let it go there. This is still a big experiment within mm. Brian Joffe's stable. And unusual to have gotten into manufacturing, which is what Adcock does, and which Adcock hasn't been doing all that well. So they've got some work to do, but you know, Kevin Wakeford, the CEO they sent down there, is a tough as nails, so I think he'll do fine. Hot or not on Big Best? I'm hot on Big Best. Hot or not? Even though you th don't know where it's going to grow to from here. I, I well, how significant yeah, it's going to grow. I back the management team. A really proven, proven track record and a deep pool of skills in that business. So I really do back the management team. Paul, hot or not? Yeah. Look, we do have a modest position in this one in the portfolio. But uh, I also think overall this is the kind of stock that goes up and down with the market. So the current level mm -hmm. is offering a little value in addition to its obvious investment strengths.